You're watching Telecom TV from SDN NFE World Congress in The Hague. And joining me now is Peter Venstra, who is Senior Manager Product Development for Security Solutions at NetNumber. And Peter, you're also the Working Group Chair of Fraud and Security Group at the GSMA. And also Sue Rudd, Director of Service Provider Analysis at mm -hmm. Strategy Analytics. Good to see you again, both of you. Thank you. We're obviously going to be looking at security and network security. Mm -hmm. um, can we start by looking at what the, the main issues are that are affecting the industry with regards to network security at the moment, Peter? Yes, and the uh, security of uh, telecom networks is in danger and our operators are cautious about that uh, because uh, the fraudsters uh, having more uh, comprehensive means nowadays to uh, embrace on the networks. So operators are needing cycling firewalls to protect their networks, especially on the international roaming services, uh, because their sensitive information is being exchanged between uh, the whereabouts of uh, customers uh, and uh, privacy-related information. And that information can be uh, of value for hackers. And the type of attacks uh, is that uh, they are, for instance, after money of customers. So they are uh, attracting via the mobile network uh, in exchange of information, identities, and uh, by that uh, they use that information either to trace the customer um, or retract, attract, attract uh, information from the messages exchange with the customer and then use that information in, uh, for instance, banking fraud in incidents. Yeah, what, what's, what's the effect of virtualization and, and network transformation? Because obviously we're here at SDN NFE yeah. World Congress. H how is that impacting uh, security? The attack surface is becoming more distributed. Uh, and, and you don't know anymore as an operator in theory where your logic is being executed. So um, also uh, 5G comes with other uh, parameters like uh, low latency uh, and that has all kinds of impact. So the security solutions that operators uh, need uh, to, to have uh, in that environment is more distributed. Uh, it is uh, high performance, but it also needs to be more enhanced than uh, what, they, what they have today. And, and Sue, Strategy Analytics has published a, a new report on signaling firewall solutions. What, what was the purpose of, of writing that report? Well, we were really trying to look at the different ways that different vendors offer security for the signaling network, which can really be viewed as a network in its own right. Um, and we need to do all the things we do to preempt uh, attacks on the network, uh, to prevent people pretending to be part of the signaling network, uh, for untrusted carrier operators. But we also need to do it at a speed that's really real time, and because we're talking about preempting a session in the call flow. Uh, some of the vendors do it in a message-based architecture. Some of them do it at the router. Or uh, like NetNumber, they do it in the signaling flow. So they can actually insert and preempt an attack at the entry to the network. And we put together a set of dimensions uh, which are in the report that may be useful to operators looking at any kind of security, but especially at signaling security. Peter, why, why did NetNumber sponsor the report? Well, the main reason was that we uh, faced uh, in customer engagements that, that operators have difficulties to uh, evaluate the characteristics of cycling firewall vendor products. So, um, and uh, we have uh, asked uh, strategic, strategic analytics to make an assessment uh, among uh, products, including ours in order to make that uh, more visible what the differentiators are. Because that is not that easy uh, to understand. Uh, and there are uh, criteria that also have not the awareness among customers that these are the important drivers today, but uh, especially in the future. And Sue, what, what did the report show? Um, what, what, what were some of the observations and, and, and what were some of the, sort of the, the high level recommendations that have come out of it? Well, we looked at three, three vendors, you could also add others, but we looked at you know, how you do it, do it as NetNumber does in the signaling 
uh, real-time plane. We looked at how some of the message-based SMS type, uh, SMS controller type solutions, and then we looked at some that depend more on the uh, diameter router um, and looking at it after the first access to the network. So really, some of the differences are whether you preempt the attack before there is any communications inside the network, whether you do it fast enough, um, and whether you're contending with other traffic on the network, such as message traffic or other router traffic. So there may be some real issues in terms of making sure it doesn't interfere with live service, but at the same time providing a preemptive uh, pre prevention of attack. How, how fast is fast? Can, can we get to real time? Absolutely, this is all real time. This is, as, this is in the milliseconds or even less. Um, and the issue going forward is going to be doing it on a distributed basis as we have to protect attacks at the edge. Peter mentioned the increasing attack service. Um, edge compute will, will very much increase the attack service at the edge. So much of this has to be done again before anyone actually enters the network. So also in the legacy networks, this distribution uh, problem already happens because the hackers are learning that uh, networks have multiple entry points and that uh, they uh, can distribute the attack factor then over the multiple uh, entry points. And that means that the infrastructure of your cycling firewall needs to, be, needs to act as one consolidated firewall. And that has implications because when signaling traffic is arriving on one point, all the other points need to be updated at once about that occurrence. And that has uh, technical implications. A, a final question for, for both of you. Um, against this backdrop, um, what development should we expect to see in, in network security in the, in the months and years ahead? Sue, why don't you just start off? Well, 5G has a whole new security specification um, that will work internally within 5G and eventually having end-to-end -end encryption. So there will be some much higher levels of security built into 5G. And Peter, I know you are working on some of those and how they will work with the old systems. We as NetNumber are very committed to the work in uh, the GSMA. Uh, and looking in, in 5G, uh, it is a complete different technology. It is about uh, security by design, so that is very different from what we are used to, because in number seven and diameter there was no security being thought about. So from the beginning, security by design principles will be, uh, will be there. And it is definitely being needed, because 5G is about layering different technology on each other. And that means that you cannot trust uh, the security in that stack. And this implies that at the application level, you have to ensure end-to-end -end, uh, security. That means, as uh, uh, Sue was already mentioning, about encrypting. And if that is being um, executed, then if information is being leaked at a lower technology layer, that information has no value because it is about encrypted information. And that is about 5G, but it has also um, a recursive inf impact on how the 4G core networks are inter interacting to each other in diameter. Because you cannot leave it un secured as it is today. Well, it is of course secured with cycling firewalls and a protected environment, but it is not that secure as it should be in 5G for GDPR compliance reasons and so. So we are also, uh, as NetNumber, um, leading uh, activity in the GSMA to make diameter more secure uh, by adding a signature to the signaling messages by which the recipient operator can verify if a message has been modified in between um, and uh, ultimately that some part of the message, which is sensitive uh, content, is becoming encrypted. And by that, also diameter can work as an intermediate layer for the 5G networks. Because the 5G networks will definitely not um, uh, be interconnected at day one uh, via the 5G means. They will uh, interact via the 4G core networks and at the radio uh, interface it will be a 5G network, but in the 
in the core of the network, it will drive on the 4G networks. But it requires that the security demands of 5G are also being met in the existing environment. Peter and Sue, thank you both very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you.